Hi, I'm Willis Lamb. A few folks asked me if I'd videotape the restored traffic signals in my collection. So here we go. This is going to be in two parts because YouTube only allows a certain number of minutes of video and I don't think we'll make it in one shot. And clearly, this building is used for things other than traffic signals. So I apologize for the lack of proper lighting and uh, I'm going to have to walk around a few things from time to time. Most of the signals are in family groups or family intersections. And meet the Marbleites. This particular signal here is called a Marbleite flat top. It gets that name because the tops of the signal sections are perfectly flat. They're not indented like modern, more modern signals that have little drain holes in the back to help prevent moisture from getting in. It also has a classic Marbleite tunnelway visor, which is kind of a cross between a tunnel visor and a cap visor or a cutaway visor. The signal on the left is a 1970s vintage Marbleite. It's the last aluminum Marbleite that was made. Marbleite did not go into the plastic traffic signal business. Up above is a fixed four-way Marbleite that came out of Seattle. It's got the typical Seattle Presto Bright sign box. This is a Marbleite doghouse. You notice that it has a green arrow that provides for a temporary protected left turn. When the left turn interval is over, you have a green ball, so traffic can still go and make left turns, it's just not protected. Our next intersection involves the GEs. This is a GE four-way out of Pittsburgh. It actually has a clear downlight, although I've yet to build a little sign to hang underneath the light. Next to it is a GE long groove, or a groove back. That was their single phase signal before the, the streamlined signal. Uh, the four-way actually has spiderweb lenses, which are difficult to see in the video. The groove back has more traditional brick lenses. Then we have the streamline. That was the last single phase signal that GE made before they were taken over by Econolite. And it has the Baltimore configuration with the two tunnel visors and a cap visor, and then we have a GE pedestrian walk weight head. The next intersection involves Krauss Heinz. This is a Krauss Heinz DT four-way with tunnel visors. You'll notice that it also has a protected left turn interval. These came about because as streets became more congested, especially narrow two-way streets, when a light turned red, it sometimes left cars kind of trapped that were wanting to make left turns but couldn't because of oncoming traffic. Clearly when the light turned green there were going to be cars lined up facing them and sometimes these left turn vehicles would block through traffic. So engineers came up with the idea of providing a short interval with a protected left turn to get these cars out of the way. Unfortunately if you weren't an aware driver you would sometimes expect that you had a fairly continuous protected left turn, which is why later they went to also require the yellow arrow indication at the end of the left turn sequence. Now this is a type M, four section single face head that also has a left turn arrow. Behind it is a poly signal. It was made by a company called Chapel Hill and sold by Krauss Heinz. It actually is dead ringer for the type R, which is the beige signal with the black visors. And the type R was pretty much the last of Krauss Heinz aluminum signals. Our next intersection involves Eagles. This is an Eagle Lux four way, and it was uh, originally in Fort Worth or the Fort Worth area, and it still has a few of the old lettered or command type lenses in it. Someday I'd love to completely outfit this signal with commands. This is an Eagle Lux single face head. You can probably notice that the red lens has a horizontal bar on it. The amber lens has a diagonal bar and the green lens would have a vertical bar. This was an Adler design for people who were colorblind. Back in those days there was not a standard where red was always on the top. 
and so this helped people that couldn't read but were colorblind still figure out the signals. Now this is a rotted eagle flatback here and our latest eagles uh, the yellow signal with displaying red right now is a standard eagle flatback with a uh, 12 inch lens and the green signal that just turned red and is flashing is an automatic signal. Automatic signal was taken over by Eagle, so I hung them together. Now you'll notice the signals just went to all red flash. We have a train coming down the street. Back in the early days, there were a lot of streets that shared right-of-way with trains and automobiles, and the early traffic signals weren't smart enough to figure out what the trains and autos were doing, but they also couldn't hold traffic in front of a train, even though the train was only moving about 15 miles an hour. So they did one of usually one of three things either they went completely out or they went to yellow in all four directions and held or they went to an all red flash and sometimes it'd be an indication that said rxr either neon or incandescent like this one and sometimes you were just on your own to figure out the train was coming in to get out of the way on the back wall here we have a alusig made by eagle on the right and then the five section signal is a Durasig, which is a poly version, and you can see it also has the protected left turn interval. This signal would hang on the left of the intersection on a pole, while a doghouse would be used if it was suspended over traffic because it would be shorter. We're going to continue to part two, which are some of the smaller or less known signal manufacturers.